first off, Anna, thank you very much for coordinating our, our Zoom meeting. <laughs> so I'd like to call the meeting to order for uh, the 14 mile watershed. So we're going to try something a little bit different. As I prepare for my annual trek to Arizona, I've asked uh, each of our officers if that uh, this gentleman on my right uh, oh, like her. all right thanks Don Dave Trudeau here Bill Rockenbach he said Gary Wiesner uh, I'll turn your mic on are we loud enough without the mic? We don't need the mic. Thank you. Um, Rachel says Don's audio is cutting in and out. Maybe hit record on your computer. My apologies. I didn't have the mic directly in front of me. Rachel, does this work all right now? Yeah, now I'm hearing you loud and clear. Got to keep the mic fairly close. All right, next order of business, review and approve minutes from Motion to approve as presented. Paper say aye. 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 <clears throat> Minutes approved. Any announcements? I have an announcement at this time. Um, Bob Benkowski, who's with us here today, um, Bob's been a solid contributor to this group. That Part of both Tri Lakes Chairman and as a Lake Arrowhead resident. And he has a keen interest in uh, continuing and working uh, with his group and being involved in water quality. I wanted to announce that Bob has been voted onto the 14 Mile Watershed Alliance Board of Directors. Very good. Welcome, Bob. Welcome, Bob. I have some. Um, Adams County Land and Water has put together a 15-year comprehensive land use plan for the Adams County Forest Program. We'll get off the ground. It's on their website. If you go on the website and then go under Land and Water Committee, it goes up down at the bottom. First thing that's on there, details. Different chapters to it. We can put that together and it's open for public comment through October 12th. If it's approved by the Land and Water, it'll go to the County Board for approval. And we're off and running on the County Forest Program. There's a lot of property. There you go. Any other announcements? And then we'll move on. Watershed. Right. Um, uh, nothing new. I think things are going well. Uh, we had a meeting this morning with an individual who can help. Uh, manufacturers and move forward build our relationship. No, that would be a case in. Um, we'll move on. I just had a question. Yeah. Adam, do you know how the uh, vacancy is coming along? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, is all I can say. Are they still there? Um, so it's not out yet. But it's 
So we've been doing, I think, very well at the Rome Progress. However, it is dying off as we less people are attending. So we're we actually have the opportunity to talk to people longer, which I think is very good. Um, as far as uh, <coughs> working with the YouTube channel, uh, Rachel, you still there? Yes, I'm here. Rachel. Okay. Um, I still need some assistance, if you could, with me on a uh, playlist for the YouTube channel. So maybe we can get together on that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Feel free to I, shoot me an email. Yeah, I, cool. And then um, as far as the educational programs, I have contacted Keith Johnson, who is the high school principal, multiple times. I'm guessing with the way that COVID is going, he's extremely busy. Um, I haven't gotten a response yet. My next step is if I can get through to him that way, but I would like to see us doing something with him. Um, uh, I, I don't know what to say past that, but you know, obviously we're still encouraged by the fact that um, you know, we're still working with them. I'm not sure where we're going with it yet. But any ideas that any of you have for Presentations. I was thinking maybe the rain simulator would be a good idea. <coughs> Anything any of you think of, please pass away. Um, water testing, I know that they were interested in that. I know that they were So maybe you can, you know, if we get together, we can figure out a presentation. So that's what we're looking at. Um, other than that, any ideas anybody has for Facebook, Instagram? I haven't started because. Not sure how to do it. I should probably get going on that. So please keep your pictures. If anybody has pictures, please keep. The other thing I wanted to mention is I had a great time at the Lake Leaders, which was in Kemp Station, which is on Lake Tomahawk. I had never been there, so it's very clear, unlike our lake, and it's really wonderful. I was really impressed all that they're doing there. One of the things that they're doing that I thought we might get benefit from, or that we might even try to do, is they're doing surveys on property. So what they're using right now is the Michigan survey. I guess Michigan has their own survey where you can go in and put in how you feel your property is doing. Is it meeting all the criteria? Land buffers, you know, um, how much your property is, you know, impervious, all those kind of things. So I was thinking once Wisconsin gets their survey up and running, we should consider possibly getting the, the shoreline owners um, ability to use that survey and check out their own. I think that's a great tool to get people to realize where they're at on their shoreline property. And I know we're always pushing to do healthy lakes, and this would be a great opportunity to encourage it. There is something new. Um, the final publication was just property owners, kind of a, something like you're talking about, but in a pamphlet form. Um, it goes over buffers, um, and it gives them a chance to um, walk them through how to rank properties in their shoreline, um, and then based on their ranking, gets them. I don't have any hard copies of it yet, but I do have PDF to pass along. And that would be useful by UWC Point and the DNR. I know that Allie, I don't know how to for um, the DNR for okay. an online survey. Right. Because they feel like that's meeting people where they're at, and it's a lot easier to have to send some. So um, the other thing that they did is I'm like, Really outstanding, and I'm glad I went to something I never thought of. They actually had a company, a con, you know, a consultant company, come in and go and um, survey every single property. And they had this long list of um, questions that they would, you know, fill out, like how is the uh, shoreline going from the shoreline into the water? What is the status of everything? It was very comprehensive. They did use photographs also, so they can mark a moment in time about how the shorelines look, how they're going to continue to go. So I was really impressed by that. Just so you know, this is not an easy process. Somebody had asked during this 
presentation and volunteers do this. And I'm sure volunteers could at some level, but the, the details that they went into and the amount of knowledge you would need, they were working with aquatic invasive species, you know, just the aquatic species. So that would be, I think, very difficult. But they did hire this company to do it, and they did get grants. All on them. So that I thought was a great idea, just to go and especially since we have so many properties, they were protecting their critical habitat. That's with you. I'm not sure what critical habitats we have. I'm sure, but I'd like to know where they are, and I'd like to for people to be able to see where they are. So these are all the innovative things that they're doing. Now this is a healthy lake that they're trying to preserve. We of course don't have that. We have like. So I thought that was a brilliant idea. So that was property. Um, not that many. Like there's really a lot less. I don't know, 150. Yeah, we have 10. Yeah. So um, it's a very different. It's an apple and an orange. Mm -hmm. But I think the idea was good. Was which was to encourage people to see what it takes to continue a property helping or lake helping. So this was the whole, you know, emphasis. And also, they want to market in time. If they've done a survey of the entire lake, then they're marking it in time. All right. Is uh, is interesting about the. Uh, and um, I know that Adams County. Something we build on. So I presume that that would be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think Dave is going to mention something about it. But um, we do in our department surveys exactly like Karen's talking about. We have a score sheet. Um, and this is, please don't send everybody from Tri Lakes our way right at one time because we have to do all of the lakes in Adams County. Um, so, let's say a, a shorefront property owner calls me and they would like to um, get advice about their shoreline. Um, Chuck and I go out and we look at their shorelines and we have a score sheet basically um, that is divided into sections. So, impervious surfaces, their shoreline buffer, um, and then just the shoreline from like the bottom of the water kind of up. So, in case there's any under. Um, and we go through each section and we rank highest uh, is where we that's where we can um, suggest the fort or the um, healthy lakes programs or to do a project. Um, um, our department is three, <laughs> so it does move pretty slow. But yeah, it's it's something that we offer. Um, free of charge, but also we've had a ton of people. It is a lot of time and a lot of resources. So, right up based on our support. Uh, one of the questions that was I thought was brilliant to ask it is how long does it take to do the survey on each? Uh, these men who are doing it are past their employees, a lot of them, who are the consultants that they chose for this project. So it took two per people, and it took them, they said, and I thought this was amazing, five minutes. And this is a long, yeah. they showed us the sheet, but they used a lot of, you know, questions on it. So this was pretty intense. But it took them hundreds of hours. After they did it, this company supplied a mapping so that you as a homeowner could go on the internet and find it and see this is where the critical habitats are, this is where my property is, and then they would color code them. So there was, you know, basically like you would see in any, um, you know, color coding. It would caution with yellow, green was, you know, good, those kind of things, red was, you know, work on it, those kind of things. So that's what they did. So I'm thinking that it wouldn't be bad to have consultants kind of do this work right. to do the whole three lakes. Right. at one specific point. And we, we do have a good start. Um, the only thing is getting 
get that done from shore, you have a hard time, like say on Arrowhead, where it, you know it is the lines are a lot steeper. You can't see in the upland portion of the property, so um, we ask that we can come onto the property and go out on your dock because we live upland where say if you've got roofs that the um, gutters and the runoff are not controlled well that can be contributed to shoreline. Um, so we just kind of get a picture, full picture of the crop. Um, I'm thinking I've seen that in an Achillman where there was maybe was it the beach close? Is that only the beach? No, I bought the okay. okay. property owners and okay. I had just, just what uh, Karen referred to. I mean, that color coded like okay. red, yellow, green. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, what I, and, and it, it, it uh, I think, primarily just assessed the, the cover on the shoreline buffer area. Right. But at least it was started. Right. I, but, but I think that was quite some time ago because that was when we saw the county council. That was about the time they started the 19th. Oh, the thing I like about this, in our or Adams County board, both are looking for the other question I have is that available. So, um that's kind of just available to us as a department. Oh, okay. It's not anything, I mean, it's public if we share the uh, property owner. But say, like, you guys wanted to do a survey yourself, you might kind of need a trained eye because a lot of it is based on us having not previous knowledge of the uh, properties we've looked at and then baseline and doing, unless you have like a knowledge of what that base you know say we have one property owner here and they have zero vegetation on their buffer and another one that has quite a bit of vegetation but they don't think that it's enough they might rank themselves a little bit higher you know they could still rank themselves the same just based on yeah I mean having private consultants come in would not be a, a, a bad thing you just if we're looking at it at the nine Aspect you want to make sure their or she kind of aligns with Adam's case. Well, they have that they use from the DNR. Yeah, so I'm guessing that when they started with those people, they're very good, outstanding. By the way, they want to share their with everybody. Uh, into actually helping up what they call the um, I run through DNR. You can go on all these things that will help you determine where the bad prop or not the bad where the properties that need help are. So um, they're working on that. It's, I thought it was a great program. They just say you no, know, they. Just Um, it was really pricey, but um, again, it, a lot of it was covered through grants. So it wasn't that the, I think they had to come up with, I don't know if this was the amount they came up with or the amount that they ended up, um, that all of it cost. It was like 25000 It was It was a big amount, but it was, I can't, I don't know because it was a big group of us. It was the, uh, as a whole group, and I didn't, you know, I couldn't just answer. But I can just, I have the contact, find out any of this and get that. I think we can even have access to this. They're really nice. <laughs> they really want this to, they're, these people are dedicated to clean. I just think it would be good for Dave and healthy life. We need to encourage more people. How many do we have this year, Dave? 
healthy life? How many? Yeah. Got about a dozen interested parties, and not that actually. to late testing. We'll continue through the July. The other issue we have even I have been we'd like to have somebody with more uh, youth. <laughs> Youth and and uh, that's the technical technical skills. Yes. Yeah. So one of the things we're trying to do is formalize. I've gotten two responses, which. I We'd like to get more anyway that's um you posted that with UWSP also. I've been in contact able to get I had a leave message. I sent an an email. Followed up with phone calls and I'm sure they're pretty good. They have a service there where you can post chat. I think they were busy at the evening. So they were presenters and by the way, Paul McGinley. He'd be perfect. Uh, First, I just wanted to bring a few. We still are testing plan for this month on the 22nd. Wednesday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
that's the only day that came available early in the week. First of all, uh, Karen's question took the wind out of my sail for healthy women. Anyway, so I've got about a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're doing good. Dave. I've got about a dozen dozen folks interested, and uh, usually at this point in time, about about half of them actually finish the planning process, and we get an agreement. Uh, Coming up, I'm still meeting some folks, uh, answering questions, working a little bit before the meeting. Uh, we have to uh, <clears throat> part of the grant application process as well. Organization, so working on that. A little more complicated than just cutting and pasting. Is there a form? Uh, there's there, there's a, an example. I will be sharing that with everybody. As soon as I've got the draft done, I'll send it. Um, kind of the, the, the first thing I'm, I'm trying to focus on is the Folks, I've got interest like Arrowhead, and that's because the association owns the first hundred foot area around the lake, so it's a different circumstance than the other lakes. So I can't just go to the landowner. I also have to go to the association and get them to sign off on any work. But uh, that meeting with the association is set up for the 24th of this month. Anyone? On Lake Arrowhead, I want to get up. Um, moving on to surface water grants, uh, we worked on and submitted a preliminary proposal for in our surface water grant uh, category is, is education grant, maximum of dollar, five thousand. So we put together education and outreach. A grant proposal. You fine tuning that and, and fine tuning that budget before. Healthy Lakes deadline, surface water grant deadline. Now the uh, firewise program deadline are all on. Might be trying to uh, pump some of this work up. Any <laughs> update on, on Legacy Foundation uh, possibilities? Uh, yeah, um, same possibilities are out there. We just know that we have. Legacy grants. Yes. We can script it. I think that's the important thing is how many people do you think the more people that are affected the deck goes all the way up to Plainfield and what? That heavy a part of this board about. Or your influence. So, um, the other thing I would mention is um, we met with Pat Rogers, some of you know her, and um, 
Uh, she lives in Florida, and, uh, and um, so Dave and I met with her this morning. Her background is, uh, and um, uh, of knowledge in that. Uh, so what Dave and I were made aware of is um, there are a lot of industry associates uh, who have sustainable projects, and their focus is really to sustain. And there may be opportunities. So we're in the early stages of looking. Um, again, these are the legacy brands. And DNR, if you will. We have a lot. I have a quick question. A healthy life, how far back do you go for a healthy life plan? How qualified in the short run? Um, well, the, the minimum width of a, of a planting buffer is 10. That's different from the three five foot buffer that was listed in legislation, but right. Of course, more, more is better. So 35 is better than 10, but but a minimum of 10 is what you need to qualify. But 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 what you're asking is how far right or back. Uh, so I'm just so saying, it, as long as I can tie in the drainage influence into the water. So if, you know, if your house is on the on the lake and everything slopes away from the lake, then it's hard to justify it. If it slopes toward the lake. Anywhere on your property where where the, I can essentially justify to Scott Provost that, that there's an influence nutrient runoff okay. coming into the lake. Let me ask you this. Uh, the reason I ask that is that the rural farmers have a lot of questions about healthy lakes. They're interested, but they're not sure that they qualify. And one of the questions was from a that's a grandfather. I don't know the, how deep it goes, so I can't give you that information. But um, I guess I wanted to know if he would die without, you know, he'd be very attached to the beach, which I tried to detail. That wasn't as easy as I thought, so there it is. Um, yes, I mean, I'd encourage there to be a buffer of the beach That's what I said. Above, and, <laughs> and anywhere else on the property. Okay. Um, the, the plantings on the, on the Health Lakes Grant have to be in 350 square foot chunks. Right. You've only got a foot width between the beach and the property line. And if it was only 10 feet wide, it would have to be 35 feet deep in order to be 350 square foot. But there's a lot of, a lot of uh, So there's there's flexibility built into okay. it, but there are a couple of minimum dimensions that we I think that's a, something that I think we should educate our um, residents. The reason I say that is when you came to my property, I was really amazed that I could do the Healthy Lakes project where you suggested we do it. We have a walkway on the actual waterfront, a walkway that goes right along the water. And there's a, you know, there's a wall, and then there's, and we have a little grass area, and you suggest we do it behind that, which, so that that's how it works. So that works out really well. Those are the things I think we need to find out more about. And especially, especially things like, like you right. did also, the, the rain garden that captures the water coming right. off the roof down your downspout, drain that directly into an infiltration area. Yeah, and we actually, I told you, the side of the house goes into that area. That's going to be the um, the new healthy lakes project. We've, we've got more possibilities at your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can be the example. <laughs> <laughs> um, just it was an observation, and. Um, Shared a mailer that came out from 40, um, and it came out from I think it was the, 
and in it, um, it's, it's good. They had an article about Charlotte and Baltimore, and the impression I got is that in Portage County, they enforced the 35. And um, I've heard uh, Dusty, is it? Yeah, he's our PNC guy. And um, I was at, a, I believe it was, talked about the um, offers on whether or not they may. Uh, there seemed to be some kind of a gray area in this. Uh, and also in the approach that Adams County don't really enforce. understand how it relates to the Healthy Lakes project. So, uh, oh, what's the name? Dusty Grant. So, to that, that um, very good, um, just so you know, and getting somebody else to talk to us about it, we talked about that a lot in Lake Leaders. How do we get people to do it? You know, is enforcement the way to go? How is it best to get people to do it? What they've determined is that it's got to become a norm for all the people in the lake. Really, it's not about a stick or about a carrot. And so if we can make a healthy lake shoreline the, you know, a shoreline to have just by, you know, promoting it, you know, making it something that people want to do, maybe giving them some kind of reward for doing it, I think those are the things that work better, and that's what they determine in our, in all these other you know, groups that work on these things. They've been working on it for years. This is not something new that they're, they're you know, trying. So I really think that I like that whole idea of making it into form as opposed to just you know, saying, well, you have to do it. That's when people back, you know, that's when they start to get a little not cooperative. I think we need to keep it in cooperation. <laughs> I think that works. And also, I think um, using free will and making it something hard to do always works better in the lot. And you know what, how when I promote these um, Healthy Lakes programs, I don't think a lot of people understand that the program not only benefits their shoreline, but if they're anglers, it benefits the yeah. fishery because of the insect habitat that natives provide. So you kind of have to work in the environment and the ecosystem as a whole and pitch it that way. It, when I do it on other lakes, that's when it seems to be the most beneficial to me. Because the majority of the people who live on the lake like to look at their fish in the water and like to see the yeah. wildlife, you know, that utilizes their shoreline. So, hey, frogs and things are disappearing. When I was with landowners too, I thought that, you know, let's do a project, let's pick the area you like best, get it in and get established. You'll like it so much that it's come back and then we'll do more. Right. Again, I always use my husband as the example. I was talking to Patrick Goggins. <laughs> this is so true. I was talking to Patrick Goggins. We had this whole thing about healthy shorelines, and he took us to a lot of on Lake Tamaha. They're very natural and native. So while we were talking, we were talking about shoreline projects, and we were talking about how to get people to want to do it. That's the whole trick. <coughs> so one of the things that they said, or that um, a lot, that I said was. My husband did not want to do a healthy life. He thought it was ugly. He liked the grass, the you know, water. And it took me literally years to get him. Thank the Lord Dave came around because he helped to encourage my husband to do it. Now, my husband is just the opposite. He is promoting that healthy life project to everybody and saying how much easier it is, how it looks better, you know, how he can see more stuff. We saw crayfish coming back. Are like there's a whole bunch of reasons why it's a really important thing to keep working on people. Sooner or later, they'll come around. So it's just Karen, you, uh, you reminded me of um, I was thinking back to when I first became aware of that 30 And I basically I did to it. <laughs> you know, this was, I think, 10 years ago when the, actually the state well, they were inducing counties to write. Remember, there was a lot of controversy, and I recall attending meetings. 
in favor of that. Well, really. But um, the deadline was fast approaching, and that was. <coughs> and so uh, the guy from Adams County came up. No, uh, this probably preceded him. But I guess it was uh, 10 years ago that he practiced. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, yeah. Maybe that was the yeah. thing, but what whether it was, that it was when he came and walked the property, identified natural uh, plants growing on my property, and what the buffer. And so for me, uh, you know, it was, it was, I guess, opposed. It's not the and so maybe we should be out there selling it. Well, that's the phrase of maybe there's a way of we've definitely got we have the conversation going with the, with this uh, education grant. Of having pilot projects and, yeah. and and mapping examples. Exactly, that's the key. Because if a person can go on a so map, if you, so if you can yeah. take a map and go out in your pontoon and take a tour and look mm -hmm. at properties, that's a good selling point. On the map, so you show the shoreline, and I yeah. think that's what it would take. Have really, you know, um, what a shoreline buffer looks like. They think it's a bunch of weeds or long grass. It's really far from that, and we have to really use terms that they can really buy into. And one of the terms I think we should probably use more of is native flowers. Everybody likes flowers. We, we should be saying things that make people want to go to this way. And once they do it, they're going to love it. We already know that. My experience, I love it. I love it. I think it's a great program, and I think it will help a lot of the shoreline. Great. I took a stop. It was, in my opinion, it's very valuable. So you've done it. Very good. Let's move on to finance. The, the numbers are all in from. Balance for where the the uh, no, I wasn't that it was, it was uh, typically that this year the fourteen will be one of the. Uh, yep. So we'll yeah. partnership development. Um, I, I guess uh, one of the things on my plate right now is to um, talk with Jeremy Pavelski. Uh, actually came up in conversation. Looking for kind of an interest, and um, so uh, it's actually related to uh, uh, what gives me a, a kind of a, probably not uh, not talk to them. I think they're doing a potato harvest, but <laughs> we'll try. anyway. Um, that we are working on uh, getting that relationship. And, you know, it's it's kind of hard to project. You don't just call somebody and say, oh. 
on our minds. And, and, um, and the other thing, uh, partnership development, me about uh, how to get that position. I, I'll be interested in just to talk about it. Um, I will contact him next. That's um, all. Um, are there any? Tell you that my children. I don't know if it's wind, or mice, or what. And my children. Is it? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. We got rid of the elchi just by dropping temperature. Yeah. That's what your advantage. <laughs> That's what causes algae to begin with. Tem water temperature gets too high. Yeah. That water it's temperature must have dropped what? 10 degrees. You get a bit of an aberration. Yeah. I don't even think of that. Idea. <laughs> you know what I noticed? I was going online. Um, we learned a lot of about unlike layers of where to go to find information. So when you go into DNR, you can find out the sucky mm -hmm. district every year. This year, and you're doing it. Yeah. I didn't even know. Go on there. I could. <laughs> no, I actually do, but I don't go into the details. But anyway. 14 miles. <laughs> <laughs> so I went. I went and asked the thing. I found out that um, the sucky disc breeding. This is more about the smell. I don't know. It's actually good compared to other. Like it was five feet in like. And we have noticed that even though there's been a lot of those clumps of algae and all of it, and it's, I mean, that's the thing, but the water itself looks uh -huh. Yeah. So I was my aqua sweep when it moves all that algae out, the water's been clear all summer long. Exactly. Probably exactly. less chlorophyll. <clears throat> numbers, excuse me. Yeah, I've not had time to assess any of the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of different things that could play into that um, of chlorophyll, but also they do, uh, they do <laughs> but it, it's also uh, a, a lot of clear water can have its ups and its downs based on where it's at. Um, just because it clearer water, more light penetrates further down into the profile of the water, overall increases the growth of aquatic vegetation, which you think would be good, mm -hmm. but it takes oxygen to grow and oxygen to die. You know, in a, in a lake that has very little flow coming through it and sometimes very little wave action, you can see a lot of danger kills to the levels for fish. So it's a very delicate balance. You have to kind of, with water clarity, because it's good when you've got good water clarity, if it's too good, it's it's nice. Exactly. Exactly. We have a lot of calcium in our. A lot of calcium because I was told, and this is something hard for a zebra mussel. So um, we must have enough. I'm guessing because we have zebra mussel. It's pretty generalist, so it's uh yeah yeah. It's, but they said you definitely need to have. If you have low calcium, you're not going. So have not seen it that builds yourself. Yourself, so. Just the question, uh, all boxes you're talking about? Yeah, the DO level. So is there is there a range? A range? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. It depends. It depends on which fish species um, you're talking about. Because I mean, here if you've got bluegill, bass, and pike, and crappie, I mean, they can have lower dissolved oxygen levels. In so there's not just one baseline. So, um, depending on which body of water you're looking at in the ecosystem, as any town report? I was doing budgets and uh, we got 
just this week. And <laughs> so, um, I like to say pants. Be, uh, that interesting group of students as usual. Uh, item 10, is there any part of the committee? The only thing I want to mention is I'm going to go to Heartland Farms. It's under my belt. Going tomorrow. So if you guys have anything you want to <coughs> email me. to mention I, I just got an email just shortly before the uh, meeting here from Discovery Farms. It's actually a survey, but it kind of indicated that they're going to be thinking about um, the 15th. When, when the first question is, do you attend an in-person conference on this? That kind of makes it but then they also ask about uh, what people would be more likely to. We really discuss a lot. You talk to them, encourage them to go away. <laughs> I, I actually said, they have it on the 15th, I'll come. Great. Um, Dusty for that. Oh, I guess I'll try and reach them this time. Topic is, 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 is we, we, we get a lot of questions so that uh, you know we. I was just going to offer a suggestion to the combined effort of Shoreline and his survey, and, and I don't know if when you do the or of, I don't know if it's good or growth. Then you had mentioned about part of the postal stick, and then. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so I guess a suggestion to that would be is I, when I cruise around, I, I know what looks good or what I think is appealing. Um, I, if some 
somebody does look across rather than go red, yellow, green. Take me, if you went around and I was ever a standard, a gold standard for, for my whether it be a gold, gold star, a silver star, a bronze star, that in my or in my yard at the or gold level hard there and then and then if I'm cruising around and I don't have a gold star in my yard and I was you could you could say if it's a healthy legs gold standard or whatever and, and then if people inquire about that you could direct them and say survey and right now you're currently in you're not silver or bronze if you want this if you want to do this already bronze and you want to get gold collaborate and combine all those things together. I go around, I don't want to look at it. One time we were putting, encouraging the property owner to put signs out for those that did the LP Lake project. All that from the water, from the water stuff. I, I know there was one on Sherwood that I'm aware of. And I, the production of healthy lake signs got delayed because of COVID. There are 50 signs waiting for me. Once they can get from uh, Lander to Wisconsin Rapids to Lake Sherwood, to, to me and Lake Sherwood. So. But I'd like your But, but they're also, yeah. you know, that's right. Right. Well, they they small, they they like a little small. You just see like a little star or a medallion yeah. or something. Yeah. Right. Right. One of the grant proposals, but idea. I like your idea of the, of the yeah. stars. Right. right. But, but I like our, that. In, in our grant proposal, we, we did uh, talk about, you know, big enough signage to identify. Mm -hmm. That's properties that, 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 we, that we want to show off. Mm -hmm. That's an outstanding idea. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great Thank success. you very much. You know, we are always looking for members. <laughs> so if you'd like, we would love to have you on our board. I am only newly retired, so right now I'm just enjoying the chill. Yeah. <laughs> when you're done with the chill phase. <laughs> right. no. Greg, are you on our mailing list? When we're done here, maybe we can put them on. They can Very yeah. good. Yeah. Kind of in line with our approach, just to give you. <laughs> <laughs> our really our approach for the coming year is to really reach out, be more proactive about signage and potential on the highway. That's the creativity we need. So October 11th.